Ladies and gentlemen, with that jaunty hat that she's got there <laughs> and a jaunty smile, uh, it's uh, it's Ronnie Bennett. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, Alex. Yeah, she's out of sync again today, folks. Uh, I don't know what happens with her once we start recording her, but... Uh, Apparently, it's all my fault. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Anyway, uh, how have you been? I've been just fine. How are you? Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, let's, uh, first of all, I want an, uh, an update on your health. Is it okay? Uh, yes. I had a chemo infusion last Thursday. Um, and, you know, the, uh, they always tell you that the, that the side effects of, of chemotherapy are cumulative, that they get worse over time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what I've done in life to deserve this, but this has been, I guess, five infusions, so once every two weeks. And each time the side effects, which were minor to begin with, not big ugly ones, um, get lighter and lighter and lighter. And so this time I hardly had any heavy fatigue. Um, and I had a little neuropathy in my hands and feet, but that goes away quickly and not much else. So I'm taking it. I think it's wonderful. I found out I'm a little bit anemic. That goes with chemotherapy, so they're keeping an eye on that. And um, everything is fine. Wow, that is incredible. I, bravo. Yes. Bravo. Yeah. So if you today, you, you, other times that we've talked, you seemed a little tired. You know, yeah. you seem and to I don't today. You don't, you're back to your old self, actually. Yeah, and that's what I mean about it seems to get better. That by this time previously... I was tired, not fatigued, the whole heavy thing, but still quite tired. Today, I feel like a normal human being. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, yeah. I'm so happy. Uh, uh, for all we know, you'll live another 20 years. You'll outlive me, you know. Yeah, 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 we'll see. Well, you know. Uh, Hardly. <laughs> you know, it's the old saying about uh, my wish for you is that may you live a long life and the last face you see be mine. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and how are you i am uh, i'm fine you know just the, or, or do i get the list of hypochondria this no is, no i'm not going to do that because the list as i get older gets longer and longer <laughs> you know it's not like all of a sudden you uh uh you you suddenly uh what, what's the word i'm looking for uh, you, you suddenly uh, uh, don't hurt as much as you did when you were younger. You know, you start, uh, you know, there's the neuropathy and then there's the this and there's a, a loose tooth that I have that's been hurting me, for, it's been bothering me on and off for years now, on and on and on. All these things are your body falling apart. Yes, you yes, know it happens. And, and you would think that, you see, the reason I don't believe in God, okay, is if there was one, there would be several things he would do. Number one, he would make things better as we got older. Kind of, hey, thank you so much for living a good life. You don't have to hurt. There's no pain. No, but it all gets worse. And the other reason, and I'm sure of this, that there's no God, is when he created the prostate, why he ran the urethra right through it. Uh, you know, if there was a God, he would have said, you know, if I move that off to the side, then these people won't have urinary problems when it gets old and swollen. Well, but, you weren't supposed to live this long, I think. No. All of us, we weren't supposed to live this long. <laughs> not at all. And not at all. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, you know, I mean, I, I have to say, you know, I mean, I'm very, I get really depressed, you know, when I hear about somebody I know who died. You know, and then I say to myself, well, the reason I know that he died is because I'm still alive. <laughs> you know, I always like to joke about my mother who once said when a friend of hers died at 92, gee, she was so young. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Young gets older and older as we get older. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, what's interesting, you had... Uh, you had pancreatic cancer. I still have pancreatic cancer. You still have it? Now, why Why do you say you still Because the name follows the original diagnosis. I see. So, in other words, once you've had it, you always have it. 
Yeah. Oh, it, oh. It, and it and it in my case, I now have a cancer in one lung and in my peritoneum, but they came forth as it were from the original pancreatic cancer. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you think it was created by the pancreatic cancer? In other words, the fact. I don't. That, I mean, you know, I don't know that you use yeah. the word created. Let by, me put it this way: works. they. It, 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 do we use the word cured you of pancreatic cancer or no. they eliminated the pancreatic cancer? No, what's, what's no, the no, term? no, 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 no. It's pan I have pancreatic cancer that has migrated to a lung and my peritoneum. Okay. But the pancreas is not a problem anymore. Well, it could be. I mean, any place in my body could be. Yeah. At anyway, all, all I'm saying is that but we... But it started there and that's the reference is is it's pancreatic cancer. When you said to me, I have pancreatic cancer, I, I almost started writing your obituary because that's, <laughs> no, because that's a death, no. you know that's a death sentence, you know? Yes. Uh, but 3% like of pancreatic cancer patients are alive five years later. Right. And, and on top of that, uh, there is a special operation that only you and about 10% of the people who ever get pancreatic cancer are candidates for. Called, called and the reason for that is that it's so difficult to diagnose pancreatic cancer that it's way far advanced by the time they find it. And I was just lucky that I was only at stage two when they found it. Ten years ago, when Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, they caught it very early at stage one, and she didn't even need the surgery. And um, so, but most people, it's stage three or four, and they're not eligible for the surgery. Yeah. So, um, and and uh, now we find out, uh, and so when I heard about it, of course, I, you know, I, I thought that was the worst diagnosis you could possibly get, and you knew it was too, but you had the operation and at least for a year did not have any symptoms and whatever. Do you know that it's been, I just figured this out a, a week or two ago. I hadn't done it before. It's been 20 months since I was diagnosed, almost two years. Wow. wow. I didn't, I mean, the first few months, uh, you know, I don't think they've really made clear to me how hard it is to recover from the Whipple surgery. Yeah. It was awful. <laughs> And it took a long time, many months. Um, but uh, since then, they've taken good care of me. I follow their instructions. And look, I mean, I already described how I feel and how amazing that is. I don't really expect it. And so I get to enjoy these days. And, you know, it's always in the back of your head. Yeah. It's always there. Um, but I get more. I with, with the chemo, instead of getting cumulatively more side effects or, or or making them worse they seem to be getting better and i'll take it <laughs> wow wow anyway so the reason i'm bringing all this up this is a predicate to to what i was going to talk to you about and that is um uh, alex trebek yes. who announced that he has pancreatic he's, cancer you know he's an institution i mean who doesn't love alex trebek <laughs> right i mean he it, it, you know what it is there are certain people who are in our lives at an exact time every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hadn't uh, thought of it that way, but you're right. Well, and, and, that, and, you know, that's why in a lot of cases when these people die, we feel so terrible, you know? I mean, uh, because it means that, gee, 7.30 or 7 o'clock, Alex isn't going to be there, you know? But he got diagnosed with pancre pancreatic cancer stage four, Right. I don't know what was your stage was it two two same uh, and stage I, four means that it has uh, it has wandered to other parts of the body yeah and I so I pretty well have said to myself that's it for Alex Trebek you know mm -hmm. I mean let's be honest about it I mean he he says all these things like we're gonna beat this thing and we're gonna fight this thing and we're gonna keep going yeah that's uh, that's a good mindset to have. You know, but. I don't agree. I don't agree. Really? Um, I I don't like it. It's not just pancreatic cancer. It's other terrible diseases, too, that there's this war 
metaphor of we're going to fight this and I'm going to beat this. And, and it makes it feel like if you don't, if you fail at that and you die, mm -hmm. that you have, you have not, you've done something wrong that, that you haven't fought hard enough. Cancer is a terrible, terrible disease and fighting it, you know, is, is talking about, I don't know what that even means, punching back or what, what do you punch back at? Yeah. It's random. Yeah. You know, there may be some genetics involved, but it's generally, nobody can predict who's going to get it and, and be correct anyway. And, um, and I think that what, what I chose to do since doctors and nurses know they've treated hundreds and hundreds of people with cancer. They know a lot more about cancer than I do. So I listen to them, make a choice, and do what they tell me. I'm very good at following directions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. I'm very good at it. Yeah. And, and they've done the fighting. I've just been the recipient of their hard work. Yeah. And I just don't like the... I don't like the war. I don't like the fight metaphor because um, what do you do? You do what the doctors mm -hmm. tell you and hope that it works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And um, and I, I just I, I was really sorry he used that metaphor. On the other hand, having someone of Alex Trebek's stature um, and belovedness, I think, you know, I mean, who doesn't like him, as I said, um, I think that will raise awareness of pancreatic cancer. It doesn't get enough research dollars because there are so few pancreatic cancer patients compared to lung cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer that are hundreds of millions, hundreds of thousands a year. Only 40, only 50,000 50, people approximately are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer each year. So nobody pays much attention because the numbers are so low compared to everyone else. And that's what keeps progress being made with pancreatic cancer. He gave a, he gave a figure of like uh, 50,000 a year. Yes, well, that's correct. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and that's compared to hundreds of thousands for those other cancers. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, let's see here. Breast cancer and prostate cancer, I think, are the two most common uh, for lung cancer, uh, lung cancer, but uh, I, I heard the two, top two were breast and prostate for <laughs> cancer deaths. Now I don't understand in both those cases why there are so many because they are easily detected. In other words, breast cancer is fairly easily detected if you go and get a mammogram every year. Prostate cancer is pretty well easily uh, uh, noticed because of a rise in P PSA levels, things like that. We have <laughs> tests that specifically target these things. Uh, so I'm surprised there are so many deaths from it, and it must just be people who deny the fact that they have a problem. I don't know that that's true, and I don't know enough about it to, to make any decision about why that happens. There's just much more of it uh, than than pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer is hard to find because the 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 symptoms are broad. There are many different right. symptoms that don't seem to go together. And um, yeah, well, I I realize that, but my my question is, um, my question is. Uh, it, it's funny your mouth keeps moving even when you're not uh, talking. <laughs> it's like dry. I know it's driving people crazy, but and, and there are times when you're perfectly in sync. That's the other thing that's driving me nuts. Anyway, so what I was going to say is yes, we know that about pancreatic cancer that it, a lot of other things mimic problems and so on. It took you a, a couple of years before anybody figured out what it was that was wrong with you. But in Not the case of breast cancer, like you do a, in the case of breast cancer, you do a mammogram, you know, you do a mammogram, and well, it's not that simple. It doesn't always show up when you want it to, you know. Yeah, but I just I, I I before it gets uh, to anything huge, you can probably detect it. Well, you know, I'm not I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's just that many more of them than a pancreatic cancer. So it gets ignored. I mean, the the surgeon who did my Whipple mm -hmm. um, is also at the same medical center where he did that. He's also been working for years on trying to create 
a blood test for pancreatic cancer, and so are other researchers around the world. Nobody's gotten there yet. They're close, but they haven't gotten there yet. So that makes it extremely difficult to catch it as certainly as early as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and even as early as I am. I just got lucky. Most people are way far, like Alex Trebek, much more advanced by the time they find it. Oh, and, and, you know, Alex Trebek is, is a national institution, you know? I mean, even if you're not a regular watcher of it, I've gone through periods in my life when I guess, you know, maybe I was home from work that early or something, and I plopped down and watched, play. you know, we all play along yes, with Jeopardy. of course. And, um, and, and other times when I just dropped in once in a while, someone, I think it was Ken Jennings, the man that won the, the most consecutive games, uh, I've forgotten 74 of them or something like that, yeah. who said that um, it, it, he wrote a nice op-ed about Alex Trebek after this was announced, and, um, and so that he was just beloved by everybody who was ever on the on the um, on the show, and and he is. I mean, given given what public figures are being accused of these days, I mean, the really horrible things that, that go on with. Um, here's one public figure that for 35 years has just been the most solid, good guy that. It, you know, hosts a terrific show that we all love. It's been 35 years that that show has been going on. Yeah. And we, every one of us play it at some point. We right. play along with right. it. Right, right. So, and there's nothing, you, you can't say anything bad about Alex Trebek. So, so but, but, you know, we could say there's an advantage to him making it knowledgeable and so on because then people will pay attention to their bodies. And But you're, you're saying, again, this is not necessarily a disease that's that easily detected. Right. So That's the biggest problem with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, besides the cure. Nobody's got a cure for cancers yet, but... It's the biggest problem in treating it in time to give people yeah. some extra life. Now, you wanted to talk about uh, the president's uh, 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 current budget, in which he has now taken something like, what, $900 trillion away from Medicare? Well, I got a, I've got a cheat sheet here, so bear with me. $900 billion. I mean, by the way, let it say up front. The, the president's budget never, ever, ever gets passed, okay? And all of the Democrats in Congress say it doesn't have a chance. As usual, this is common. But what it does is supposedly, supposedly, is set the agenda the president wants coming up. So um, I've got this little cheat sheet here. Mm -hmm. And he's really gone out after old people. He made a very big deal during the campaign in 2016 that he would not touch Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid. And so what's happened in this budget is that he has slashed $845 billion from Medicare over the next 10 years, $25 billion from Social Security disability, mm -hmm. and Medicaid by $1.5 five trillion um, and he wants to eliminate federal grants that help pay for programs under the older Americans acts the OAA such as meals on wheels and home heating when I lived in Maine I found out how important that federal subsidy for home heating was in, in a place as cold as Maine for as long as it's cold in Maine which is about six months of the year um, so this is not going to happen, but it tells you what the Republicans, starting with Trump, have always wanted to do with Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. They want it gone, and they are never going to stop fighting for that. And uh, it's just, it, it, as I said, it's not going to happen. It never, the president's budget never happens, but it means that much more work for everybody else to fight against You know, I, I absolutely don't understand what the reluctance is on the part of certain people uh, when it comes to Medicare. I mean, what is wrong with health for people who need it, especially the elderly? I mean, this is, we're not, we're, we're not talking about something that is uh, a giveaway program. I mean, you've been paying for it all these years too, you know? Plus, I mean, I pay for Medicare uh, every month. I pay something like $120 for it. 
you know? Well, that's It depends on which kind of Medicare you have. In my case, traditional Medicare, mm -hmm. they deduct the Part B premium from Social Security check right. every right. month. Right. I also pay for supplemental, the 20% that Medicare doesn't pay for, that covers. Mm -hmm. um, and I pay for the drug Part D, the prescription drug plan. So, you know, I spend several dollars, a m several hundred dollars a month on the premiums, plus whatever I paid all those years that it went in. But there's, a, there's, a, there's another question that every developed Western country has, they don't call it Medicare necessarily, but they have health care for everyone. Right. Everyone. And, 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 it, and this is most industrialized countries in the world. The only two countries that don't have it are the United States and, believe it or not, China. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I, I do believe that, but... Um, well, they're a communist country. You would think they would have it, you know. Well, you know, there are variations of all those forms of government, and they do different things. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's this other funny thing that... I'm, oh, prescription... Advertising for prescription drugs... Mm -hmm. On television, mm -hmm. you know those awful ads that I have to turn down. I can't stand anymore. <laughs> the cancer ones, and they're mostly cancer. And they always imply that they can cure cancer, right? But do you know there's only two countries in the world that allow advertising for prescription drugs? The United States and New Zealand. Those oh, are the only two. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, what I love about those ads is they run the contradictions for the drug. And they start saying it may cause diarrhea, it may cause rashes, it may cause death, blah blah blah. Death. blah. Yeah, and while death. all of that, while all of that is happening, I like to watch what the people on the screen are doing, which is romping through fields and laughing yes. at each other and having a good time, you know. Yes, and and it's very subtle because they can't say it out loud. But the implication, if you're not following the voiceover word for word, the implication is that we can cure your cancer. And that makes me furious. Here's Just the part. Here's the part that made me furious. There was this one drug they had. Excuse me, folks. If her lips are moving when I'm talking, but it, it's because she's out of sync. Um, I have to remind people that it's like a bad foreign film. Anyway, I don't know if we're ever going to fix this. <laughs> I, it only happens with you. It doesn't happen with other <laughs> people me. I talk to. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, it, the, the, I saw one ad in which they, they said, uh, uh, you know, uh, this will help with your cancer, right? And then you mm -hmm. looked at the bottom of it, and there was a thing that said, may extend life three months. Oh, I remember that one now that you mentioned it. Yeah, yes. and so then I went to look up how much this drug costs, and it was like $10,000 a month. Yes. What, so you can <laughs> live three months longer? When I was taking... A different chemo a year ago uh, the first time that they prescribed it I went to the pharmacy in the building to pick it up and the woman the pharmacist slipped across this little piece of paper she slipped it across the counter to me and I looked down and it had the name of the chemotherapy drug and under that it said it was a one-month supply and it said five thousand dollars as that was my copay and so I shoved the piece of paper back at her. I said, sorry, I'm going to have to live without that particular treatment. I don't have $5,000 a month. And as it turned out, it's convoluted explanation, not worth going into. But I didn't have to pay that so I could take the drug. But, I mean, and that, as you pointed out, the, the one you're talking about was $10,000. Um, the drug prices are just... They're just impossible. It makes no sense. Uh, when What's I the get point a chance, of a drug yeah. that costs ten thousand, or in, in many cases more, a month. That almost no, only the very richest people can afford. So what's the point? Yeah. Well, I mean, I uh, uh, every time I see some of these ads that say, "Oh, we, we can cure cancer, or we can take care of your dermatitis, or whatever," I go online and I look up the cost of the drug, and they're they're like. Ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a month, and I'm going. Who's paying for this shit? You know. Well, only very rich people are. You know, more. Pay I'm. I'm not entirely positive of this, but I think, mo of bankruptcies, it's mostly because of medical costs. Right. 
You know, I I uh, uh, I had a I had a little problem with uh, with uh, like I take Cialis not for performance problems, but Cialis because of an enlarged prostate. Okay, and it helps with that. And every year I have to get what they call a prior authorization, in which the insurance company has to say, okay, well, go ahead, we'll pay for part of it, you know. And it's a pain in the ass every year, every single year on the calendar, you know. Trump has been making a few noises about lowering prescription drug costs. Um, I don't, I mean, with him, you never know what's real and what isn't. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what he says. Um, and, and in addition to what he's done with this budget, that doesn't sound very real compared to the Medicare and Social Security budget that he sent to Congress. Um, but it's just, the price, I don't know what people do. I mean, you just walk away and you don't get treated, I guess. It's funny, and we run out of time here, but let me mention that a couple of weeks ago, uh, I interviewed Ted Randall, who was a disc jockey in San Francisco back when I was growing up. And he's 92 now and living in Canada. Uh -huh. And I said, are you a Canadian citizen? He says, yeah, I have dual citizenship. I said, do you use their medical? He says, oh, my God, yes. I said, how good is it? He said, it's so good that if I had to live in America right now, I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. So that says everything, you know. Yeah. Anyway, this is one of those countries that does it. We've run spot out of time. And here we've done all the old people's talk again. Well, no, but, but that's, fuck them. We're old and that's what we should be talking about, right? <laughs> you know? So, anyway. It's okay. Now you're in sync. <laughs> now I'm in sync. Okay, yeah. so now, are you. I can see you, that you now, are too now. Now you're in sync all of a sudden. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe I, if I sat, see, I sat up straighter. Maybe that's what does it. <laughs> you, you know what? I think I've figured out maybe what the problem is. 